Let's talk about pivot points in Blender for both individual objects and multiple objects. We have this object here, and if we rotate it, it has a pivot point. That is a point which acts as a hinge for its rotation. If we scale the object, it also scales outward and inward from that same point. But here's an example of where that pivot point has been changed to a corner. It looks a lot different, right? And depending on what we are trying to accomplish, having a different pivot point might be what we need. Up here is a dropdown labeled Transform Pivot Point, and this is how we change the pivot point settings. These options, Bounding Box Center, 3D Cursor, Individual Origins, Median Point, and Active Element may or may not give us different results depending on if we are in edit mode or in object mode, and depending on how many objects or elements we are rotating or scaling at once. I'll explain each of these settings as we go through them. We'll start with the default, which is Individual Origins. Every object in Blender has a single point designated as its origin point. It's the small dot we see on selected objects, and when we add a new object, the origin point is placed at the center by default. But the origin point, that orange or yellow dot you see, can be moved intentionally, can also get moved accidentally sometimes. If we go into edit mode and select everything, and then move it, the origin point doesn't move in edit mode. This is a common way to unintentionally move the origin point. Back in object mode, we can go to Object Set Origin. We can choose to set the origin point back to the middle by choosing Origin to Geometry. And there's more here that we'll come back to in a little bit, but this video isn't really about origin points. Today is all about pivot points. And origin points are just one possible pivot point. And while you're here, please hit that like button and sub to help me get to that 100,000 sub mark. It'd mean the world to me. Thank you so much. So what's important is that with individual origins set as the pivot point, the origin point is what the object will rotate around and also where it will expand from and collapse to when we scale it. But what about with multiple objects selected? If we had multiple objects selected and pressed R to rotate in this mode, each selected object will rotate around their own individual origin points, hence the name individual origins. In edit mode, the selected mesh will also rotate around the object's origin point. Let's change the pivot point method to median point and see the difference. With a single object selected, rotating with median point will have the exact same effect as individual origins did. But if we select multiple objects and then press R to rotate, the objects will all rotate around a point in space that Blender has calculated as the median point. It's the median location of each object's origin points. When R is pressed, a dotted line will point from the cursor to the point in space that's being used as the pivot point. Median point will also have a different effect in edit mode. In edit mode, the mesh will not worry about the object's origin point. It will instead rotate around the median location of all the selected components. In this example, that is the center of this object. Another pivot option is bounding box center. And for the most part, bounding box will work almost exactly the same as median point. It just uses a different calculation to figure out the shared center point of the objects, but it's the same concept. Now let's look at 3D cursor as a pivot point. This should be pretty self-explanatory. With this option, anything we have selected will rotate around the location of the 3D cursor. We can easily move the 3D cursor by holding shift and right-clicking somewhere in the scene. Or we can more precisely place the 3D cursor by selecting an object, a plane, an edge, or a vertex, and then pressing Shift S, then choose Cursor to select it. Anyway, with the 3D cursor selected as our pivot point, whether we have one object, multiple objects, whether we're in object or edit mode, whatever we rotate or scale, we'll use the 3D cursor's location as the pivot point. And the last option for pivot point is Active Element, which uses the Active Element. I'll explain what that means. With a single object selected in object mode, this is going to work just like individual origins. But when we select multiple objects in object mode, you've probably noticed that the last one we've selected is outlined in a different color. Its outline is yellow, while the other selected objects are orange. The yellow outlined object is called the active object. And this active object distinction is used for many things in Blender. When the pivot point is set to active element, this active object will be used as the pivot point. Specifically, the active object's origin point will be the pivot point. Stay with me. In edit mode, we also have active elements. If we select multiple faces in edit mode, we'll see the last one selected will be outlined in white instead of yellow. That's noting that this face is the active element. Then when we rotate the mesh, it will use the center of that active face as the pivot point. 
If we were in edge select or vertex select mode, we'd have similar active elements that could be used. I have two related videos that might be helpful. I have a full deep dive into rotation in Blender, which is every possible thing I can think to cover about rotating things in Blender. I also have a shorter video specifically on origin points. I'll link to both below. My name is Brandon and I'm a real person making no fluff straight to the point Blender tutorials. Please hit like, become a subscriber and stay creative. Thank you so much.